productivity miracle. Uh, it's faded despite all of the hype. We talk about technology all the time. Listen, labor costs are up, but look at productivity. There's something wrong. It's something that's dragging. And Joni, uh, you know, wages haven't gone up. You promised us on this show, month after month after month, wages were going to go up. You're going to hold me accountable I for have that, to hold you right? Accountable. Absolutely. No, I said what? Let me clarify what I've said. <laughs> now you sound like a politician. All, what I have promised um, is that. Wages are moving where, the, yeah, the, where the there is a demand <laughs> for skills and based on the geography. And we are seeing wages move in certain sectors. It's definitely moving in the right direction, so, but not across the that's board. That's a great point, because the last jobs report, we saw a lot of jobs in the business area. We saw some. But overall, though, wages are still relatively stagnant and we're so we're down so much. Uh, and this, this this recovery is so unique in that regard. Is this the new normal? Well, you know, I hate to say I don't think we're going to see a big increase tomorrow. So tomorrow's report is only going to show us the average hourly wages, which are usually the lower level skilled positions. But if you really start looking at medium medium um, income, that's where we need to see those numbers starting to move in the right direction. And it's been slow and steady, as you stated before. Alan, politicians tell us, you know what, this big move to drive up a higher minimum wage will have a ripple effect. Now, we did hear yesterday at Walmart uh, is, hot, is bumping up the, the managers at uh, some of their different stores. But where's the ripple effect? What's going on with the wages? And, I, and I'll ask you the same question I asked jo Joni. Is this the new normal? Yes, it is, Charles. I don't think wages are going to move up because companies can't raise prices. And they can't raise prices because of intense global competition. People can now compare prices all over the Internet. And so if they're not raising prices, they're not going to be able to raise wages. And wages are going to stay down. But the good news is inflation is down, too. So when you compare it to inflation, it's kind of a wall. But don't jobs come first and wages second? I think we talked about this before. You know, the jobs have to come. The recent Fed survey shows 36 percent of non-self-employed people are OK with their wages. They just want to work more hours. Hours. So once you get those hours filled out, more people, then eventually wages will come. We're just not there yet. We should be there in this recovery. But will but the not. hours come, Hillary, because we're moving to a part-time system, in part to policy, in part to convenience. Everyone wants that work-life balance. You can't have it all. Uh, so will we even get those extra hours? Well, hopefully we're, we're moving in the right direction. Certainly we're moving in the right direction with more jobs and more people working. It's again, But the it goes jobs back to, the, to the birth growth. rates and all that kind of stuff I is really know. lackluster. 200,000 in this, in this economy, in this population. It's not a lot of jobs. I know. But but what we should see over time is wage growth in those competitive areas, as Joni referred to. Some of the R&D jobs, the engineers. So at least it's there. It's just that there are too yeah, many but, unemployed but people. people want to see that trickle down. Yeah, Ross, Ross, yeah, are, are, Ross, I want to ask you this because I brought up productivity. A lot of people don't like to talk about it because it seems a little bit intimidating to, to regular folks. But this is the key, really, to well-being. Because when businesses can get more out of a worker in terms of production per worker, that's more money they can pay them. Right. The productivity miracle is over. What happened there? Well, I think we saw amazing efficiencies over the last 20 years that we finally reached a limit to. So now, with the technology internet, is almost anti-productive with Facebook. On, I got half my kids, I got to keep them off Facebook in my office because it's anti-productive. So I, I, how much more productive can we be when we have the highest margins in U.S. corporate history? So, you know, now we see Walmart paying more out to employees. And, and I think Matt's right. Until we have more jobs, until there's demand for labor prices or wages can't go up. And, and that's, that's the problem. The so, economy still is not that good. So as an investor, does that make you worried? I mean, margins, I, I look at margin expansion. If you're saying that's it, we can't, we've cut bone, fat, gristle, everything from right. the workforce. There's nothing left. There's nothing left on the computer technology but, side. So from what an about investor, demand? No, but from an investor yeah. point of view, that's the only thing. Yes. We need demand. Other yeah. than that, then you would, you would worry about the market because of this. Well, the only reason I don't worry about the market is this environment creates very low interest rates that support the market. So when you don't have full employment and you don't have wage pressure, you don't have higher interest rates, which supports all assets. So, so, Johnny, so we're, it, it works right. kind of both ways. Johnny, we're hearing Goldilocks from Wall like Street. <laughs> Goldilocks, if you've got an engineering degree. And if you ain't in either one of those camps, right. you're up. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, there's a whole new dynamic that's coming into play. And you talk about part-time jobs. The on-demand economy is now going to create a whole new opportunity for many people that aren't even participating in the workforce today and may get back into the workforce. So the job 
picture and the way the workforce looks today is really going to start to look differently and evolve. And there will be more jobs, but there's going to be more part-time. Right. There's going to be more you're flexibility. Right. We will see ways to You're talking move, about though. the Uber, yeah, the you're Uber. Yes, about the Uber economy. Listen, All I told you, we've done shows I, I just in this. Wrote about this yeah, when, I, when I was younger, we called yeah. it hustling or my neighborhood scrambling. You know, <laughs> someone who worked at the post office but sold weed on the side. Whatever yeah. you had to do to make <laughs> extra money. Will that, will, that, will that kind of tweak your new normal kind of situation? You know, our workers don't have the right skills skill set for the 21st century economy. Wages aren't going to move up. So you mean driving the Uber, skills. picking someone up at the airport and driving them to That's their hotel is not going to gonna fill the void? That's not going to cut it. It's filling a lot of people's voids. I mean, I take Uber all the time. I always ask the drivers. None of them say I'm getting rich. They say, hey, look, it, it gets me through the, the month and I can pay my bills. It's like Etsy. It's like all these businesses, small businesses that people are starting, and they don't make a great living. It's a part-time living, but they're making money. But I think our demographic is money. setting up for it, because as the millennials are getting older, and then and they are getting to the age of, of family formation, that type of stuff. They are, I, 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 you know, set up to do the wellness economy, in my opinion. As the baby boomers hate to say, they start to die off because they don't have the skills. <laughs> the guy who pulled a lever for 40 years, unfortunately, doesn't have the skill out there yeah. at 65 years that's old exactly, to get a job. Exactly that's the problem. a really that's good point. That's brought up point. exactly the point. That yes. if I'm a 50-plus-year-old worker, I just don't have the skill sets anymore. And I'm not spending the time to retrain. And that's the problem. Re-educate, retrain. We, we, we get these kids out of college that can do stuff on the computers and, right. and, and, and they're, they're young and they're motivated and, and, and then well, when I, you I got older a, person, Ross, I got a two year old granddaughter that runs circles around me on a computer. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. No, it's true. I it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to say, Hillary? Um, what I was going to say is that that 50 year old plus group, yes, indeed, and I think it's a very important point. Technology has outpaced their skill set and what I find interesting, so like for example in my firm, I have only 50 year old plus workers and that's because my talents I need are incredibly talented financial analysts that know the stock market. But if you need anyone who knows anything at all about technology and how to use it, it's really a problem. And so that's why it's sad to say, but as the millennials move up, we may have a But the a bottom whole new line, economy. though, and we'll leave it here with you one more time, Joni, this, this, and, and I guess in a way you and Alan are agreeing, this sort of wageless recovery will continue. Yeah. Only, I, as Only I said before, in certain sectors, and information jobs. technology, right. nursing, right. engineer, the STEM fields, that's where we're seeing the wages really move. All right, guys.